Good afternoon. Um, I hope everybody's weather is as beautiful as it, it is today in Texas. It's nice and cool, but it's not so cold that you're freezing and you get to wear a cute little Christmas is coming shirt. Uh, my name's Jessica Unkin. I'm with Night Legacy Nicely Trained Dog. And um, just a quick backstory. My, my experience, I started off at eight in obedience. And uh, when I went to be a teen, when I turned into a teenager, my dad started letting me learn to handle and train uh, police dogs and detector dogs. So my background comes from there. Yes, I did do pets on the side um, for extra cash, especially in college. Um, but that's where my back my background comes from. And one of the things I've noticed, and you know, I've just gotten back into training. Uh, I retired for a while to have kids and. Um, and my father died in about five years. I just couldn't even look at a dog. So I'm back in the back in it, and I keep seeing there's so many tools that we have trained as trainers have access to, and um, I'm not against any one of them. Every trainer has their favorites, but one thing I never see is the art of the choke chain. The choke chain I can do, you know, and that's only if the dog needs it. If it's on a flat collar. I'll go flat collar all day long. Um, <clears throat> once you move to the slip collar, depending on you know the, how well you're able to manage the slip collar, the next step up should be the choke chain. But we see people going from flat collar to pinch collar to electric collar, and we totally miss a step. And there, yes, as a police a police dog trainer. Um, we used pinch collars and we used electric collars. There were times that we had to use them. But 99% of the time, it was a flat collar for when they're searching or it was a choke chain. And um, I don't see that anymore. So I wanna bring back the art of the choke chain. So that way we're not using these really heavy handed devices when we could use something that's, it works so simply and so quick on the dog and it doesn't have the pinching and all the other stuff, which, you know, I've rarely seen a dog except for in attack issues, which we were working on, that I couldn't fix with, with a properly fitting choke chain. And that starts us on our first part, is the fit. Back in the day, choke chains used to come in two inch increments. Now, they're small, medium, large, extra large. In order for a choke chain to work right, it has to fit right. So. When you're, if you're going to measure a choke chain, you have what's called a dead ring, which is the ring that lays on the top of the neck, and you have the live ring, which is what pulls the chain. When that, do, when that chain is pulled its tightest, and it's supposed to be right here, it shouldn't be more than about four inches. If you're way like this, or you're like this, it's you're not getting a correction either way. This has too many links, it's not going to go back in in case you have to do a double jerk and this you've already got tension in it there's no way you're getting a, a correction out of that so four inches the other thing is a lot of people put them on backwards so yes you can put them on backwards with a choke chain choke chains simply typically go with people who are learning obedience and where are the dogs on our left hand side so when you pull that live ring, it needs to be rubbing against the other links of the chain. If you have it on like this, and that when you pull that live ring, it's rubbing against the dead ring, that's backwards. So we have it like this. We have our dog to the left, we put it directly over him. And it should sit, sit, it should fit right here and it should, it should be right going against the links of the chain. The next thing is using a choke chain properly. Most people picture choke chains, these big jerks and jerking the dog all over the place. No, a choke chain is a quick pop. That's it. Hey, it gets their attention. Hey, sorry about the injury, not doing anything. Okay, if you wanna practice, Having that, what you do is you take a choke chain with a dumbbell. There's a little three pound one. Okay. Put the dumbbell, put the choke chain around it. Oh. Oh. 
life. And you practice. Uh uh. Off. Off. Like, you practice just doing that, a jerk, like this. And you just want to jerk just enough to get the to get the dumbbell off the ground. Not this. That's not what we want. It's all in the wrist. Like when you're fish catching fish, right? It's all in the wrist. Then when you have a proper fit, proper fitting, properly put on a hook shape that's in the proper thing, you can get your dog to do anything. Anything that a pinch collar can do. If your dog is pulling, say the dog's pulling, all you gotta do is keep the keep it right next to you, turn around, dog's right next to you. And yes, see? It's all I didn't even pull that hard. Just right there. Same thing if you want him to leave it. Let's say they're smelling something and you want him to leave it alone. Leave it. Give a pop quick of the pop pop quick of, quick pop of the choke chain. So if you have any more questions about the art of the choke chain, you know you're not feeling comfortable with the prong collar, you're not feeling comfortable with the e-collar, but the slip collar and the martingale and all those other ones aren't working. Give me, give me a call or DM me and I can show you how to properly use one. And I guarantee you, you're going to be able to do just as much, if not more, with just a choke chain.